topic is on converting between different metric units. So looking at our notes, it says the metric system is an internationally agreed upon set of units for measurement. You should be able to see this all around our world because the metric system is definitely used in Canada. But it's actually known as the SI system. And SI stands for system. Let's write this down. S-Y-S-T-E-M-E, -E, System International. So it's French. Or the International System of Units. It has several what we call known basic units. And four are commonly used, which I think we all know. But there are three that are not that you might use later on in your life. But I'll show them to you anyways right now. So for length, can anyone remember what the standard unit for length would be? Yeah, if you said the meter, you are correct. And the symbol we use for meter is M. And for mass, the standard unit would be, yeah, it's the kilogram or gram. So kilogram, I'll say. And the symbol would be kg. Temperature, you think Celsius. You are wrong. It's actually something called the Kelvin, K-E-L-V-I-N. And they use capital K as the symbol for that. For those of you doing science, you might have heard about the Kelvin scale. And for time, no, it's not minutes, but it's actually seconds. Mm -hmm. Seconds it is, and that's small s. Electric current is something we use the amp here for, and that's capital A. The amount of a substance, for those of you taking chemistry, you're talking about the moles, and that's M-O-L. And luminous intensity, light, we use the word candela, and the notation or symbol is CD. Notice that all the symbols are small case except for the Kelvin and the Ampere. Anyone know why? That'd be an interesting question to find out. Why would we have to capitalize the Kelvin and the Ampere? Hmm. You decide later on. So, anyways, why do people use the metric system? Well, the answer is it's easy and it's simple. Because the metric system uses powers of 10. And we've looked at powers before in Math 9 already. So hopefully this is a little bit of a review. You can either multiply or divide by 10 in order to produce larger or smaller amounts. So I don't know if you've seen this chart before, but here are all the different prefixes. So maybe you would have seen something like this. One meter is equal to, and can someone tell me how many centimeters? Yeah, if you said 100, you'd be right. And you're like, how do I get that? Well, the basic unit in this case is my meter. So that's where I am right now, M. And I want to get to the centimeter, center. And look at my prefixes. Where is center? Oh, yes, down here. Down two levels. And this becomes now centimeter. Okay, so my basic unit is meters. The letter in front is my prefix, the letter C. And it tells you it's 1 100th. Or in this case, 1 meter is 100 centimeters. Okay? So that's why you can use this factor table to help you go from different symbols or different prefixes to different prefixes. Might be a little bit confusing right now, but let me show you some examples and I'll hopefully help you understand this. The basic unit, by the way, the power of 10 is always 10 to the power of 0, or in our previous studies, that's equal to 1. Okay? So going up you see we have powers of 10 10 to the power of 1 10 to the power of 2 10 to the power of 3 now notice here it goes from 3 to 6 so there's a little bit of a jump there's a jump in three powers of 10 same thing down here there's a jump in three powers of 10 all right so let's try one of these examples and let's see if we can figure this out convert 3 kilograms into grams notice i underlined the k cuz that's the prefix kilo so in this case kilo is right here yeah and I'm comparing it to grams, which is my basic unit. So now what I'm saying is I'm going from grams all the way up to kilograms. So how does that connect with each other? Notice the powers of 10. In this case, a kilo is 10 to the power of 3. Or what's 10 to the power of 3 as a number? That's 1,000. So what we just said here, comparing this to that, is that one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams so knowing this can we now convert three kilograms into 
how many grams. Yes, if you can just quickly say, hey, if one kilogram is a thousand, then if I multiply the kilograms by three, I also need to multiply the grams by three, and there we have it, 3,000 grams, okay? Now that's one way of doing it. Another way, other way, if you'd like to use what they call these conversion factors, and sometimes in science they do this, you could also do it the following, three kilograms, write that down first. And then, this statement that we wrote down earlier, one kilogram equals a thousand grams. These two things are equivalent. So if I were to divide them by itself or each other, you actually get the number one because they're equivalent. So in science, sometimes they use this thing called unit analysis. And this becomes one kilogram over a thousand grams because that's equal to one. Or you can write this as one thousand grams over one kilogram. In this case, I'm going to use the second unit factor because if I now multiply the three kilograms by 1,000 grams over one kilogram. Notice now this is like a fraction and my units here, the kilograms, kgs, divide out and you're left with the unit of grams, which is what I want. In this case, three times 1,000 divided by one, that's just 3,000 grams, okay? So I just showed you two different ways of doing this. It doesn't matter which way you choose to do it, but I thought I'd show you two, okay? Turn the page, please. Ah, let's look at this exercise now. Let's convert 2.4 gigabytes. You might have seen this with your technology. And let's change this into kilobytes. So gigabytes to kilobytes. I'm going to go back to my previous page. Giga kilo. Where are all those things? Ah, giga is here. Kilo is here. And notice it went down two levels. But wait, look at the powers of 10. It's 10 to the power of 9 compared to 10 to the power of 3. So if I'm asking for a comparison, I'm asking for a ratio. So what's 10 to the power of 9 divided by 10 to the power of 3? Once again, you've done your powers and exponents before in Chapter 2. We now know when we're dividing, we subtract the exponents. So 10 to the power of 9, the exponent is 9. 10 to the power of 3, the exponent is 3. 9 minus 3 must be 6. Right. So in this case, what you've just told me then is 1 gigabyte is equivalent to 10 to the power of 6 kilobytes. And 10 to the power of 6 means 1 with 6 zeros. So that's a million kilobytes. So if I want you to convert 2.4 and left this as an exercise, I'm not going to say it to you. I want you to try it now. If you know that one gigabyte is equal to one million kilobytes, tell me now, 2.4 gigabytes is equal to how many kilobytes? You try. And if you said you just need to multiply by 2.4, you are definitely correct. And you would have got 2.4 billion or two, sorry, not billion, two million, two million four hundred thousand kilobytes. And that's your answer. Okay, let's try this next example. Example two says convert one hectometer into one kilometer or kilometer. So let's go back to our chart. Where's hecto and kilo? Hecto, kilo, hecto and kilo. Hmm. I see hecto right here, H. And kilos right above it, right there. This time, notice we're going up the table. So we're comparing now powers of 10. Hecto is 10 to the power of 2. Kilo is 10 to the power of 3. So as a comparison, once again, I'm going to do a ratio. 10 to the power of 2 divided by 10 to the power of 3. That equals to what? Hmm. Well, we can subtract exponents if you wish, or we can write this out as 10 times 10 over 10 times 10 times 10 either or I hope you'll see that this equals to 1 tenth so ultimately what I'm saying now is 1 hectometer is equal to 1 tenth of a kilometer and there you have it I already got the answer because I asked you to convert 1 hectometer to kilometers we're done
Okay, so once again, we're looking at the ratio of the powers of 10, and that will help us figure out the conversion factor. All right, last one here. Exercise, convert 250 milliliters into liters. Let's once again go back to our chart. Milliliters with liters. Milli is right here. Liters is our basic unit, so we're going up here. And if we're going to compare our pack factors, it's 10 to the power of negative 3 and 10 to the power of 0. So 10 to the power of negative 3 divided by 10 to the power of 0. Once again, we're subtracting exponents. That's just 10 to the negative 3. And that's just 1 over 10 times 10 times 10 or 1,000. So what you just told me here is that 1 milliliter is equivalent to 1 1,000th of a liter. So then how about 250 of them? Well, if I just were to multiply this by 250, I need to multiply that also by 250. And notice you'll get 250 over 1,000. And if you simplify this, you just get a quarter. And that makes sense. 250 mils is a quarter of a liter. Okay? Now, to summarize, if I asked you to convert from a lower prefix to a higher one, and that's what we did in the previous exercise, the one about 250 milliliters to liter and the hecto to kilometers, look at what we had to do. These were all fractions. So notice we were actually not multiplying by powers of 10, but we were dividing by powers of 10, by factors of 10, because you had a fraction here. And to convert from a higher to a lower, that was our previous example. See, kilo to grams, right? Kilo to grams. That was a higher to lower. Same thing with the giga to kilo. Notice in all those cases, we had large numbers or large factors of 10. That's when we actually had to multiply factors of 10. Okay? So if you want to go ahead and just understand this idea of going up and down the chart with the prefixes, uh, summary, if you're going from a lower to a higher, you divide, and if you're going from a higher to a lower, you multiply. Okay, so one last example for you, and this one I'd like you to pay close attention to, because your assignment in class will be very similar to example number three. I'm going to add you to, or ask you to add the following three lengths. Notice the units are all different, though, but I want you to write your final answer in centimeters. So my suggestion to you would be then, of course, convert all of them to centimeters first. And since the first one's already done, yay, we don't have to do that. But what about the 6.5 now? This is millimeters. So millimeters to centimeters. If we're going to use our little chart. Where's millimeters? Where's centimeters? Here's millimeters. And one up is centimeters. So if you want to just go ahead and find, compare the ratios, you can. Or just knowing what we just said in our summary, to convert from a lower to a higher, what do we do? We divide, yeah. So in this case, it's just one power of 10. So notice what I could do is just quickly divide by 10. 6.5, I can divide by 10 or multiply by 1 tenth, it's the same thing. So in this case, this becomes 0 0.65 centimeters. And there we have it, we've changed that to centimeters, that's great. We've got to do the same thing with the next one, the DM. So what's DM? That's decimeters. Let's go back. Oh, there's deci. It's right up top here. And we want to go down in this case. So going from a higher to a lower, we multiply. And notice there's only one power of 10 difference as well. So let's go ahead and just multiply by 10. So that means this is equal to 30 centimeters. So ultimately, when I add 2.3 centimeters, to 6.5 millimeters, which is equivalent to 0.65 centimeters, and 3 decimeters, which is equivalent to 30 centimeters. Our final answer will be, dun, 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 how about 32.95 centimeters? Done.